You're just not saved and then nothing happens. There is a continuing process progressing in your life that never runs out as long as you're alive. Doesn't mean you love for the first 10 years, the next 25 years you don't, because you can't help yourself but to love that person. That's the reason I know that it's a godly love. When I don't want to love that person, I, mean, I end up doing it. I hate that. It's like with my wife. I'll never do another thing for her. She is so mad, I ain't going to talk to her for two days. I'm talking to her in 10 minutes. <laughs> I hate that. I mean, I, I have never stayed mad at my wife more than how long? The trip over? Man, I was so mad at her when I came to church and the 10 miles we drove. Uh, I'm only going to talk to her the rest of the trip. Okay. Now that you have already purified your soul, Love one another. This kind of loving is only active in the soul that has been cleansed and purified. Our soul has been purified and cleansed. That word soul there in that verse means your person. The real you, your whole spiritual being, you are a soul. The way to see the real you Chapter 1, verse 9, the salvation of your soul. What was saved? Your soul. Chapter 4, verse 19, the whole being, the real person was saved. You have received the ability to love at the time that your soul has been purified. It's a past event. When the readers were cleansed with the continuing result, what happened in 1954 in my life continues to be working and never runs out of energy to do that. At no time in my years of ministry, every time I wanted to hate a preacher, Every time I wanted to hate a deacon, every time I wanted to hate an elder, every time I wanted to hate a person to quit churches, <coughs> so working on that <coughs> it becomes a command for me to love that person. Doesn't mean I need to go hug them. I ain't gonna have them. <coughs> oh hush! I hug that has what? Hug that person. And ask myself, what in the hell? Why did they do that for? I don't even like that person. He went up and hugged him and he said, you know, life is too short to waste being angry. And then I came and home. hugged him. Oh, that's terrible. I shouldn't have never done that. The person I hate <laughs> the most. <laughs> it worked on me when I didn't want it to work on me. It works on me when you don't want to work on me. I, you know, there's sometimes you just really want to stay mad. Hello? <laughs> you know then that it's working. Oh, hush. I don't tell. To make me love what I ought to be. A past event. <laughs> the past event at salvation. The new birth. Notice verse 23, 1 Peter. I don't think many cult leaders get up and confess their sins. They're being born again. <laughs> being born again. At the moment of salvation, you were purified. I'm not saying, you know, I look at some of you and wonder, I don't know if you've been purified. <laughs> but if you've been born again, you have been purified. God said it. I didn't say it. I wouldn't say it. <laughs> Notice it's been born again. Is it verse 23? Yep. Yeah. Having been begotten again. Which means to beget again. To be regenerated. Becoming something new. So verse 22 looks at salvation at the human side 
Verse 23 looks back at salvation from the divine side. But this I would have you to know, salvation is a purifying event. This past event has continuing effects. I keep saying that. I've said that in so many ways. Salvation has a continuing effect. You cannot say, well, I have arrived at my salvation. I am 66 years old, and you can tell I have yet to arrive at a full pledge, but it keeps working on me. Earl, I'm 75, and I'm still on my way. You still got another 30 years. <laughs> you can be 105. <laughs> this past event has continuing effects. This conversion event will have post-conversion growth. This conversion event will have post-conversion growth. Something's going to happen after you got saved. Can I tell you that? It is not, I hope so, not I yeah. think so. Conversion has a post-continuous change in your life. How often have I said, 1995 was the best year I ever had in my life. It can't get any better. Then 1997 came along. 98, 99. And then I said in 2010, there seems to be, and I, and I, and I said, Recently, I said, I don't think that I've had a better life than in 2013. And 2014 seems to get better. Not because I have more money, not because I have more friends. It is that the Spirit of God has increased His love in me in spite of everything that has taken place. God gives it to you in your spirit, not in faith. The cleaning, the cleaning and I tell you, I, I, I have never enjoyed preaching <coughs> to a group of people that at least give me the idea that they <coughs> like it. <coughs> Don't go too far with that. <coughs> the cleaning, cleansing deals with the past sins. <coughs> The cleansing deals with my past sins. He cleans all that up. Aren't you glad? He cleans up all my past sins. He's cleansed the past and looks at the future and does the same. If He's cleansed me from past sins, He continues to cleanse me from <coughs> sins in the future. This cleansing does that. This cleansing deals with past sins but gives a sense of a new power for the future. Knowing that He's going to forgive me from my past sins gives me hope that He will continue to do it when I fail in the future. Ezekiel, notice if you will, Ezekiel chapter 36. And verse 24 through verse 27. Bill, if you'll read that. Ezekiel 36, 24 through verse 27. 24 through 27. I, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. It not only does what something. Chapter was that? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. It does. That wasn't twenty. Twenty-four. Was twenty-seven? Oh, and I will put my spirit within you, mm -hmm. and cause you to walk in my mm -hmm. statutes, and ye shall keep my judgment. And do them. Who will cause you? God. God. It is not only does something from the past, but from the present. 
Amen. But also in the future. If God's done it in the past, He's doing it now, He'll do it in the future. 2 Peter 1 4. 2 Peter 1 4 says this. You have become a partaker. 2 Peter 1 4. Look at it. Underline. Highlight it. You have become a partaker of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, you have escaped immoral corruption. Now you have a pure pattern of living. Here's what God said. When you have been saved, you have entered into a divine nature having escaped the corruption that this world has. 2 Peter 1.9 says this, 2 Peter 1.9, you have been purified 